Good morning, everyone. I believe everyone is blessed today. That you are alive. You are happy. You are joy. Ready to receive the word of God. Amen. Amen. Just like to say thank you, Father, for this day you have made. Let our heart rejoice and be glad to hear your word and receive your truth that will set us free. I would like to say thank you, Pastor Doreen, for opening up the floor to preach and proclaim the good news of the Lord, to free the captive and set them free. I would like to say thank you to the praise and worship team, multimedia, for their good work, hard work to get this online. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your mighty name, we come before you in spirit, soul, and body to give thanks and praises to you, Lord God. For your mercy is new every morning. Even this morning, we have received it with joy and gladness. We thank you for your love and grace that carries us throughout our day, Lord God. Thank you for your word of truth that you will be speaking today through me as a vessel as your mouthpiece to proclaim your good news, Lord God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence within me. You are the greater one who is in me. And I thank you for setting all people free from sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I share the message today, I would like to share my testimony on how the Lord saved my soul from the pit of hell, from the power of darkness, into the kingdom of His Son, Jesus. Amen. amen. So in 2013, or well, let me say, before, before I was saved, I was a total sinner who turned his back, where I turned my back on the Lord, and I went my own ways, being a rebel, disobedience, break all the Ten Commandments, and many more. But there was one morning, one Sunday morning, I came back from the club, went out clubbing, with a cousin of mine and came home. It was only daylight. My wife and my daughter was at home sitting, just sitting in the lounge. So I just came in, went straight into the room, fell asleep. I'm not sure how long I fell asleep, but then I heard a voice that said to me to get up and go to Abel's, Abel's church. So prior to this, I was working at a warehouse. I was working with a brother. He's a brother of mine in Christ now. His name's Abel. And we both serve the Lord today. And we're in the same, same church, the Providence. So I've asked him uh, two weeks earlier if he goes to an English speaking church. Because my wife was seeking, she needed help because of me, of who I was back then. So he told me about his church, it was called Light Point. I didn't end up going there to check it out because I've asked him. But on that weekend, when I heard, heard the voice saying, get up and go to Abel's church, I got up thinking it was my wife that was calling me. But she said it wasn't her, it wasn't her that called us, called me to, to get up and go to Abel's church. 
So I got up anyway, still in my clubbing clothes, still half drunk, on drugs, going up to where, to Abel's church, Light Point, Light Point Church. As I got there, there were a lot of people outside. They greeted me, they greeted me with smiles and joy, welcoming me into the church. And they asked me like, um, this is my first time here. And I said, yeah, this is my first time. Because everyone was staring at me because pretty much I just looked wasted. I did look wasted. But still, they still welcomed me in. And I've asked, I asked one of them if um, they knew Abel. And they said, yeah, Abel, Abel does come to this church, but he's not here. He's not here at the moment. And they, were, they asked if I wanted to stay or... So it was either I'll walk back out or stay and wait. So in the end, I end up taking a seat right at the back, waiting to see if, if Abel turns up. But on that Sunday, Abel didn't turn up. I thank the Lord, he was there. I heard the good news. For the first time, I really heard the good news the Lord Jesus had done for me. That he died for my sin. So I was sitting there, convicted by the word of God that was preached, by the Holy Spirit, convicting me of sin, righteousness, and judgment. At the end of the service, the preacher announces if anyone hasn't, that hasn't received Christ into his life, into their life, would come up or put up their hands and receive the Lord that day. And I showed that my hand went up because I was convicted of sin. And I knew there was many I've done, but I heard the mercy of God, His grace to forgive me of all that I've done. So the miracle took place on that Sunday without me knowing it. But the evidence was clear as I surrendered my life to the Lord, changing my mind about how I was living. I surrendered my life to the Lord that day and the miracle took place. For coming the next morning, Monday morning, where I normally take, take drugs before I go to work, I was no longer able to take the drugs anymore. It was taken from me. The drugs was there. The equipment was there to use. But I couldn't touch it. It was no longer there, the desire for drugs. For I now know that that void that I was seeking from the world to fulfill was finally fulfilled by the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. No longer needing alcohol Amen. or drugs Amen. or parties or women or many other things that we all know that we all try to fulfill that void. But still in the end, it doesn't. And I would like to share the prayer of my mom during this time as a rebel, as a sinner. Her prayer was, Father, have mercy on my son and don't let, don't let him die before he knows you. That was my mom's prayer. She shared with me after I told, I shared with her what the Lord has done in my life. And she said, this is my prayer for you, son. Throughout those days that I was out doing my own things, pleasing my own self, not caring of anyone else, her prayer was to God the Father, to have mercy on me. And don't let me die before I know. I thank the Lord for his word. They have set me free. His truth, his ways, his life have changed my life and my whole family. Even to this day, I'm glad to serve the Lord. For he is worthy <coughs> to be praised every day. For he is a merciful God. And that is my testimony of the mercy, the love and grace of God that he has done in my life and my family. All oh, glory be to our God and Father, Lord and Savior Jesus, and the Holy Spirit.
Before I start the message today, I would like to proclaim the word of God from the book of Hebrew 4, verse 12. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, your soul, and the immortal, which is your spirit, and of joint and marrow of the deepest part of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purpose of the heart. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the greater one who is in me than he that is in the world. I thank you, Lord, for your word of comfort that I can do all things through you, Lord Jesus, who strengthened me. Let me be your mouthpiece, a vessel, to speak your word today. The title of my message today that was given by the Lord is Repent Before Our King and Judge Jesus Christ returns. Amen. I will say it again. Repent before our King and judge Jesus Christ returns. Hallelujah. The first time we read the word repent in the Bible is found in the book of Genesis. Chapter 6. Verse 6 to 7, and it says, And it repented the Lord that he had made on the, on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beasts and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented me. They I have made them. So here we see the Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it, repented in regret that he had made man for the evil that was in man, wickedness, turning their back on the Lord, doing their own things, ungodly. And even we see it today in this present day where good is called evil and evil is called good. But in these days here, during the time of Noah, who was the tenth man from Adam, he found favor. He was the only man out of the whole earth that found favor in the sight of God. He was seeking the Lord. He was living for the Lord. He knew his God. He was the only one out of the whole world. They found favor in the sight of God. And this is where the whole earth came from. We all came from the family of Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. Thank be to the Lord for his mercy. We have the question, everyone will be questioning, what is repent or repentance? Repentance isn't defined in the Bible as an emotional decision, but a decision that comes from the soul or the will of a person, but the conviction of the Holy Spirit, of your sin and the righteousness of God and judgment to come. I believe everyone knows that... Um, there are two languages that the Bible was translated from. One was Greek, the Greek, and the other one was the Hebrew. So the word repent in Greek, metanoia, meaning a change one's mind or change your mind meaning changing your mind about living to please yourself and doing things your own way, but living to and serve the Lord 
and Savior of your soul, Jesus Christ. So that's in the Greek. It means change your mind. And then if in Hebrew, Yeshua, meaning return or turn. So this is the modern translation of the word repent. Repenting towards God, the Father, for the forgiveness of your sin. Turning away from your sinful ways. Denying yourself and hate evil. For it is written, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. But there are four words in the original Hebrew that defines the word repent, which has lost its full meaning in the English translation. So the first word here is yud, meaning a mighty deed or work that has been done to accomplish a divine purpose. That's what's this word. The next one is noon, meaning a work that brings life. The third is ched, a home, which meaning a home or place that provides security, protection, refuge, peace, and love. And the fourth is mem, meaning life-giving water. And this water only comes forth from the living word of God in the Bible and from the person itself, our Lord and Savior Jesus, with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So now we see in these four translations, to me, it's all pointed to Jesus and his finished work. It's clear that our merciful God, the Father, has made a way for everybody, for all men, and longing for their return, inviting all people to come to Him, taking refuge in Him, receive salvation for their soul by only one way. There is only one way to the Father, and that's through His Son, Jesus his Christ, and his finished work. Through repentance towards God the Father and faith in Jesus the Christ and the regeneration of the Holy Spirit that gives you the new birth on the day you come to repentance before the Almighty himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is a merciful God. He said it himself. His mercy is new every morning. Amen. Saying all these, some people may say, but I haven't done anything bad. I haven't broken the Ten Commandments. But the Word of God said in the book of Isaiah 53, verse 6, it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. You may not steal, kill, drugs, do drugs, but you have gone in your own way during your lifetime that has been given to you by the Lord. Finishing off that verse, we have turned everyone to his own ways, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So we all have gone either way. But even some people might still say that they have been gone their own way. The word of God says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's the truth right there. We're all sinners who need to repent before the Father for the forgiveness of your sin by the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. The Word of God is the truth, and they will set you free. Now we know that the word repent, for me, it's, it's been required from the Lord from the right through from the Old Testament to the New. And here we are looking at the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. It's speaking here of John the Baptist, who was being prophesied by 
the prophet Isaiah, that he was going to be the voice. He was the voice in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord, making straight in the desert a highway for our God. So Isaiah prophesied of John, John the Baptist coming before Jesus was born. And he proclaimed in chapter 1 to 2, In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was, his, that was all his message throughout that time, was calling people to repent. He's calling us today, calling the church today to be the voice in this present day, calling people to repentance before our King and Judge Jesus Christ returns. As we all know that as believers, that we are all waiting on His return. Amen? As the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now we look into Matthew 4, verse 17. And this is the beginning of Jesus preaching. And it says, From that time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So there was his message too, to all people to repent, calling people, for he was the kingdom of heaven here on earth, but they did not know that. And as we go on to the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 37 to 38. And this was the first sermon of the church on the day of Pentecost, where the apostle Paul, uh, Peter got up in boldness, in filled with the Holy Spirit. And it says, now when they heard, as he proclaimed the good news about the Lord Jesus, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here's the first sermon of the church by the Apostle Peter, proclaiming repentance for the forgiveness of their sin. And that is our message today, as the Lord speaking, calling all people to repentance. As he sent out his apostle in Mark chapter 6, verse 12, telling them the same thing. So they went out to go out and proclaim that people should repent. It's pretty clear here as we're going through the scriptures, the word of God speaks louder than anything. So he's sending us as believers to proclaim the good news to people at your workplace or wherever the Lord leads you, that they may come to repentance. And now we look at Acts chapter 17, verse 30 to 31 where Paul, the one that was trying to destroy the, the body of Christ, was commanded by God to call all people to repentance. And as we read the time of ignorance, God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man. And this man is Jesus, whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead, calling all people, all people, even in the church, like myself, before when I was, before I got saved, I used to go to church but I went to church for my own personal reason. I didn't go there for God. Just went there to hang around with the boys. 
you know, up to no good. I'm confessing this because the Lord knows what I've done, even in the church, taking drugs and going sit at the back and laugh at the preacher. Yes, I was convicted of all of that. Because even in the church, the Lord sees everything, good and evil. You may be going to church for so many years, still haven't changed your mind about how you're living, still turning your back on the Lord. So he's calling you too, to repent, because he is mercy. He's giving time to all people to come to repentance, even his own body. Or you may feel that you have done so many bad things that God can't forgive you. I'll tell you today, I'll testify today to the mercy and the love of God for you. Change your mind about where you are. Turn around. Turn away from what you're doing. Come back to the Lord, because He's a loving Father for sure. I've tasted and see it for myself. I know how good He is, how faithful He is. Even when I'm not faithful, He is. He's an awesome God. Now we'll look into the book of Second Peter, chapter three, verse nine. And it says, the Lord is, is not slow to fulfill his promises, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but all should reach repentance. You can hear the word of the Lord speaking to you right now. He's promising you. He is a promise keeper, for sure. For, f for families, for friends, for anyone, He's giving you time to come before Him, repenting before Him, receiving His grace, His mercy. Because if not, it says here, you'll perish, where you will be separated from your creator who loved you, who gave you time. For the only time you have is when you still have a breath of life to come before him, seeking his mercy and receiving his grace and having faith in his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, whom he has made as the only way to the Father, the only way to have eternal life, the only way they will make you right with God, not in your own work, not in your own goodness. For us, as we have read before, for all have sh fall short of the glory of God. And the standard of God right at this moment, is only Jesus Christ. He is the way. He proclaimed himself, he is. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by him and him alone. As we all know, there are many religions out there, but Christianity is the only religion in the whole world that has a God who hears them, who has a God who sees them, who provides for them. Amen. We know other gods. They are being built by the hand of man. They just sit there in your front yard or in the temple or something. They have an ear, but they don't hear. As the word of God declares. They have an eye, but it can't see. It doesn't appreciate you. There's no love there. The only one true God there is, who is, who was, and is to come. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus, the Christ of God. And now we come to the end of the Bible, the book of Revelation, chapter 2, 
verse 5, where it says, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. The Lord said to the church today, repent. He said it twice. So he requires this from his church today, from his body, that he knows everything that is done in the church, good and evil. So he said to remember where you have fallen from his truth. Remember where you have fallen from his way, his kingdom teaching, according to the word of God, without compromising. I think we all know that there are many churches out there who have turned their back on their first love, Jesus, their Lord and Savior, by following the way of the Nicolaitan, t- Nicolaitan ways of embracing sin in the church, ignoring the separation or inform to the world's ways, even disregarding ongoing repentance before the God, before God the Father, and even to each other. There's no peace if, without any repentance. So he's calling his church back. Come back to your first love when you first repented. Do the work you did at first, serving me wholeheartedly, speaking your, the, his truth, guiding people in the right way, teaching his good news, the good news about the mercy, the love of the Father, or he will come and remove the lampstands from its place. Where churches, there is no fruit. The church is there, but the Spirit of the Lord is not there. For they have turned their back on the way of the Lord, the truth of the Lord. So he calls them twice to repentance. For he cares for his body, his church, at this present day, before his return. Now we look into the Old Testament, a couple of books. We're going to look in, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 30. And it says, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, Everyone according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from your transgression, lest iniquity be your ruin. So don't die with your sin. He's calling people to repent, as he did, as he called his own people, the people of Israel. He's calling people today to come to repent. You don't need to die with your sin. Your sin was taken care on the cross by Jesus. He carried your sin. He's the only one that can set you free. He's the only one that can deliver you from that power of darkness that's holding you captive today. For in his name, there is power to heal to restore with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And in the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 4 to 5, Jonah began to go into the city, going a day journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believe God. They call for a fast and brought on sackcloth for the greatest of them to the least of them. Here we see the man of God send, God send Jonah to Nineveh, even though I think we all know that Jonah disobeyed the Lord. He didn't want this. He didn't want these people to receive the mercy of God. But it's not up to you or up to me of who can say who can be saved and who cannot. 
it is the mercy of God for all people to come to repentance and receive his grace and his love. As they come to repentance, changing their mind, turning towards God and putting their faith in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now we'll look in to the nature of repentance. And we'll find it in the book of Luke, Luke 15, chapter 15, verse 17 to 21. And it says, but when he came to Jesus, but when he came to himself, sorry, he said, how many of my father's hired servant have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against you, against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servant. As we see here, the nature of repentance by the parable of our Lord Jesus that he taught to, to the people in his days. It is a perfect illustration of true repentance. And we all heard, we all heard, it is the parable of the prodigal son, or some believers would say the caring father, as we see it in the scripture itself. So the first thing we see here in the beginning of the verse, verse 17, where it says, but when he came to himself, so this son here wasted all that was given to him by his father, living it up, parting it up, whatever he was doing. But as we all know, he would, it was a Jewish, Jesus was talking about a Jewish father and son. He turned his back on God, as we see. But when he came to himself, he, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish with, here with hunger. So, speaking to himself, he came to his senses in his mind. He knew he's done wrong toward his dad. He changed his mind about where he was at, at the time. So he was thinking this as he was saying, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And I think many of us, I feel like that towards God, because we have gone on our own way, doing our own things, thinking there's no way, there's no way God will want me back. There's no way God will, will help me. But God's calling you to come. Come to yourself. Change your mind about where you are. Turn away from evil. Turn from your wicked way or turn from your own ways. Seeking the world where things on the earth will be perished, will be destroyed. But seek his kingdom. Seek the father as you come to repentance before him. And as we read on, as he was saying that in his mind, now he's changed his mind about where he is. In verse 20, he said, and he arose and came to his father. From there, he turned, he turned his back on the world, on his, he turned his back on his own ways and head toward his father, not knowing that his father has been longing for his return, even though he's gone now and wasted all that he has given him. So it is the same for us now. He's calling people now. Change your mind. Turn your back.
on doing things on your own ways, pleasing yourself, come before the Father. Repent before the Father. Confessing, Father, I'm sorry for turning my back on you. And I have sinned against you. Please have mercy on my soul. And forgive me, a sinner. And put your faith toward Jesus. Confessing, Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are the Son of the living God, who is Lord of all. I believe you took my sin upon yourself on the cross on Calvary. I believe in my heart that you died and God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior and thank the Holy Spirit for the new birth that he will give you, cleansing and regenerating a new heart in you by the mercy and grace of the Father through faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior, the King, and the Judge to come. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the Mighty One of Israel. You are the one true God who was, who is, and is to come. We thank you, Lord, for your word today. That people were blessed and convicted by your Holy Spirit, who has moved in their hearts and their families. I thank you for your word of truth that speak aloud today. Blessed be your majesty on high, Lord God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love and grace, giving time to all to come to repentance before you. All glory and honor, power and dominion belong to you forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everyone. I hope to see you next week. Have a blessed week. If you could just see Please share the stream on various social media accounts so that God's word continues to be spread around the world. God bless. Have a great week and we'll see you in the next live stream.